Hey Rioter, it's the first week of April and we are busier than ever. Stay tuned as we fill you in on Rioter's elections, different campus organizations, and Mike Huckabee's visit to our university. All that and more on Rioter right now. Voting is not the only important part of showing school spirit, but it is also part of being an American. Governor Mike Huckabee is well acquainted with the political process. He recently came to Ryder to speak about his run for president. Olivia Hoff has more. The former governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee, was here on our very own Ryder University campus. He gave a speech on policy, politics, and the future of the Republican Party. He spoke of his ideas to fix the economy and even held the crowd's attention by adding in a few jokes. He went and gave the credit card to rent the card to the clerk behind the counter. The clerk took the card from the campaign. It had on the card, Huckabee for president. And the young clerk looked at that, looked up at the press secretary and said, Huckabee for president. President of what? <laughs> there were so many people in attendance that not only was the theater in the BLC filled to capacity, but there was also an overflow area in the Kavala room filled as well. Those in the Kavala room watched the speech over a projector screen. But before the speech could begin, a few students and faculty were outside protesting the event. Um, I'm protesting this event because I, I'm embarrassed that my school has Mike Huckabee here. We are a school of science and he's basically against science, civil rights, he's against everything that our country stands for. However, Governor Huckabee was not afraid to show his patriotism. I think that there's none other ever in the history of mankind quite like this great constitutional republic of ours in which we the people really do ultimately have power. Joshua Hurst said the president of the Rider Republicans reacted to the protesters. Well, the protesters certainly have a right to uh, right to protest about Governor Huckabee's positions, and you know we had a protest last semester about Donna Brazil. We raised political awareness, and I hope that the protesters tonight did as well. Reactions from the speech were mostly positive. And I was extremely happy to see someone of that uh, intensity come into Ryder and, and and perform. I love the fact that they opened it to the public. Um, I thought he had a lot of great things to say about the direction of where he thinks the country should go. After the speech, there was a book signing held in the art gallery with the line stretching all the way down the hall. After the book signing, Governor Huckabee had some advice of his own for young voters about the Republican Party. I think the Republican Party essentially stands for the empowerment of each individual, believing that liberty is an individual right and gift. It's not to any group to which we belong and that, uh, that our goal is to do whatever we can to empower individuals to their full fulfillment in whatever it is they choose. When asked if he would ever run for president again, Governor Huckabee had this to say. Not sure I'll ever do it again, but I had the time in my life because I learned that America still is a great place. I want to keep it that way. And I hope you for Ryder right now, I'm Olivia Hoff. Whether you're running for president or running to save a life, it's all very important. To continue the fight against cancer, many Ryder students participated in the Relay for Life. Kathleen DeFrancesco has the details. The American Cancer Society's Relay for Life took Ryder's campus by storm. More than 600 participants from the Ryder and Lawrenceville communities came together to help support cancer research, education, survivors, and affected families. Participants in Relay for Life had fun choosing team names and mascots. During the 18-hour event, team members took turns walking around the upper-level track in the SRC to help raise money for this important cause. Heather Fischler, SGA Spirits and Traditions Chair, expands on the success of Relay for Life. Relay for Life is an overnight walk which raises money for the American Cancer Society. And it's now a new tradition here at Ryder that's going to be long-lasting and benefit tons of people. It was so great our first year that we doubled our expected goal of $25,000. Although the SRC was packed with groups of diverse students, all seemed to have the same reason for supporting Relay for Life. 
I came out for Relay for Life in order to support my family and all of my friends because I've had two members of my family that have passed away from cancer and I really want to help to fight and find a cure for it. Cancer has affected uh, me and my family, like my grandma. Uh, she's a breast cancer survivor, so I just felt like I had to come out and support. Uh, I came out for Relay for Life because uh, it's something that Ryder put on that's going to really improve school spirit. Uh, I think it'll be a really good time. And then personally, uh, I had a brother who passed away to cancer when I was a senior in high school. Uh, so it really has been something that I really care about, and I, I'm really happy that we raised as much money as we did. For Ryder Right Now, this has been Kathleen DeFrancesco. Those who took part in the Relay for Life honored those who have fought cancer. Ryder University also honors a particular person every year as the Nancy Gray Award is given out on University Day. Lou Romano fills us in on the, this prestigious honor. The Nancy Gray Award is given to a member of Ryder's faculty or staff who exemplify leadership, school pride, and service. Nancy was a tremendous uh, administrator here at Ryder. She really came to exemplify the ideas of uh, service to the institution, uh, the ideas of school pride and school spirit. Her impact in the community was so great that this, this new award would be um, named after her. According to students, there are many possible nominees. I would give the award to Dr. Linda Materna. I would never admit it when I was in her class, but I learned so much. Barry Jeans deserves the Nancy Gray Award because he's a phenomenal teacher. Professor Drawbridge deserves this award because she is a great advisor. It just helps everyone in the bio department. This year's award will be given out during University Day on April 7th. The reason University Day was chosen as a time to give the award out is that University Day has come to symbolize the best that the community has to offer and that this award kind of really exemplifies the idea of the best that the community has to offer. Many notable faculty and staff members have won the award over the years. Most recently a uh, faculty member last year, Karen Torsha, the Associate Director of Athletics, uh, Jamil Mosley, one of our area directors. It is an honor in itself to be nominated in my mind because it is among the, like as I said, the folks who've impacted this community the most. So you'll find out who the nominees were are uh, come University Day. This is Lou Romano for Ryder Right Now. Though we are part of the small Ryder community, there's an even larger one Ryder is part of called the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities in New Jersey. I have the info on what this association is all about. This past week, Ryder played host to the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities in New Jersey. The association works for the 14 nonprofit, independent, privately supported universities and colleges in New Jersey. So what we do is we lobby and um, use public policy to promote the causes that would help our 14 institutes. It's an opportunity for student leaders from across the state in similar situations at similar institutions to us uh, to talk about issues, to, to learn and share their leadership experiences, but also to learn about the issues in government uh, that in budget building and things that are affecting um, higher education. Students have a powerful voice in, in lobbying and, and working with government, so they can, if they can learn more about what's going on, they understand what government's all about and how it's funded, they can talk to their representatives, and they have a big impact on things like the Educational Opportunity Program, the TAG grants, when they talk about how it's affecting them on a day-to-day -day basis. So first, the opportunity to deal with government and be able to understand and lobby the government for things that are affecting students uh, when their lawmakers are making decisions, and also, secondly, to be able to share the their leadership experiences and grow from the, so just the sharing of people who are their peers. Leaders from the 14 schools got together to compare notes and it seemed as if Ryder had a lot to offer. The university is also doing with the going green and stuff like that. I will have to speak to my college president as well about it. It also showcases our facilities here. Um, and we, we have a great uh, place for to host conferences and to, to host other schools and I think that's fantastic. Uh, it also shows that Ryder really is a leader uh, in the New Jersey University and College community and uh, I really like seeing that shown off. It's, a, it's an excellent experience and I, I think it, it's a lot of help for fledgling leaders and, and leaders who do need a direction as well as leaders who have, have gotten, you know, uh, been around a little bit longer and just want another opinion on things, how to run things. For more information on the association or to get involved, visit www.njcolleges.org. Although Women's Month has come to a close, there is a group who celebrates it all year long. The new wave of girl power in the form of her story, Literary Journal, had its first premiere and Gina Grasso has the story. 
people see the word feminist in the title, and they don't really understand that um, feminism isn't bra burning, it isn't men bashing, it's, it's more of a, um, her story is more of a humanist approach. Her story is a literary journal compiled of poems, essays, and autobiographies, as well as fictional and non-fictional stories from both men and women. The theme of her story of the premiere, I think, was appreciating all parts of a woman, all parts that a woman goes through, whether it be like good parts, bad parts, like frizzy hair days, perfect hair days, you know, emotional stress, beauty, strength, um, and it was about appreciating and performing pieces of work that looks at all those specific things and sort of um, brings light on all those different parts of someone's life. With over 100 people in attendance, the premiere was a triumph for the woman of her story. The premiere was a big deal for us. It was a really, it was like our coming out party on campus. I wanted to incorporate that female energy, that female talent um, through music as well as through um, literary works. Her story needed that premiere to like, to let people know what we're all about. And everyone who attended, I think that they have a different idea of what, um, feminism really is and what feminism at Ryder can mean. Through the Her Story blog at blogspot.com and different events that they will be hosting on campus, these ladies hope to break the prejudice around the word feminist and to continue their message. Women aren't the only people who can enjoy um, works about women because women are part of everyone's life and everyone has a mother and lots of people have sisters and there's a lot of, um, there's women in your family and there's women all around you. For Ryder Right Now, this has been Gina Grasso. Don't miss out on the movement. For copies of the journal, stop by the BLC info desk before they all go. Ryder's community is mixed with students from many different cultures. The Latino community is also an important and significant part of Ryder's cultural melting pot. Eva Dela Cruz took a look at the Latino presence on Ryder's campus. Latino is a word that covers a vast amount of people, um, but one that really speaks to the heterogeneity of peoples of Spanish um, and Spanish-speaking descent. Their presence on Ryder is growing more and more. I, I was one of three Dominican students on campus. Since I've been here, it's been an explosion of Latino students on campus. I'm very happy to say that not only are more Latinos coming to Ryder, but more students are becoming aware of Latin American culture. Lasso is a club for Ryder students to experience and be exposed to Latino culture. Lasso, the Latin American student organization, um, wishes to spread Latin American culture not only throughout the Ryder community, but throughout our entire community. So what we want to do is um, connect writer students to the Latin American culture and to the surrounding Latin American culture. The class Latino Voice will teach students about Latino culture through literature. Sort of historical implications of women um, taking a voice and taking a stand through their literary works. People like uh, Julia Alvarez, Ana Castillo, um, uh, Gloria Anzaldúa, um, and uh, and looking at and how how they use autobiography to talk about their pasts. Latino culture has a relevance and importance for all to learn about. Just think about it. Our, we have when you call a bank and they say uh, press one for English, press two for Spanish. It, it shows you the way that the country is moving. It doesn't mean that we're going to all be speaking Spanish one day because that's that's probably not going to happen. But it does mean that there's a strong, strong Latin American presence in the country. This is Eva Dela Cruz reporting for Writer right now. To learn more about Latino culture, look for the next bi-weekly meeting on Mondays at 5.30 in the Daily's back boardroom. Have your moods or luck been changing like the spring weather we're having? Well, that's because the moons just keep on changing. Here's Kathleen DeFrancesco with the latest horoscope update. Hey Ryder, it's time for your horoscope update. The spring equinox, which was on March 21st, is the beginning of the new zodiac year, and Aries being the first sign on the zodiac table is in effect till April 20th. Aries are independent, strong, ambitious, and like to take charge. Let's talk to some Aries personalities here on Ryder campus. The person that instilled my independence was my parents because growing up um, they taught me different family values of certain situations. If you feel as though it's negative, stay away from it. So my being an independent woman to me is making sure that I'm responsible enough to handle myself in a negative situation. Being an RA, uh, 
I just feel that, you know, a lot of the characteristics I have in my life, such as leadership, responsibility, uh, just being a role model, can really help me along in my future studies and just anything that I need to do. I can always think back on this experience that can help me. I consider myself an independent woman because I've had my own job for the longest time and I'm going to college right now to support myself in the near future and I don't need any man to help me do that. There's only one more sign left till the end of the school year, so make sure to check back. For Rider Right Now, this has been Kathleen DeFrancesco. Be sure to check back and see if we spotlight your Zodiac Month. Just as April's showers bring spring flowers, it also buds poetry. In honor of April's Poetry Month, Eva Delacruz went around campus to see how students feel about the language of poetry. April is known for its sunny days and postcard scenery. However, the month also celebrates another abstract idea, which is poetry. How do you feel pulsing through the blood in your veins? It is how you see buried beneath the founding features of what you now claim. In celebration of Poetry Month, writer students gave their take on poetry in their lives. I started writing poetry like at the age nine years old, but I started like performing poetry like probably at the age 13. First really got interested in poetry. That was sometime around high school. Poetry is seen as a muse for whatever is needed. Just getting the pain out, getting everything that's inside of you out. It's the music of the soul and um, can be used to express any emotion you're feeling. Uh, I like music a lot, so the lyrics are very poetic. I like Jill Scott because I feel like she sings in poetry. Edgar Allan Poe, you know, like Quote the Raven, Nevermore. Uh, Maya Angelou has some really good stuff. I'm going to read poetry. I like uh, natural stuff like Walden. The Fire Literary Journal features poems with all types of topics. One thing that you're going to get is like a shock. The pieces will definitely grab your attention and keep your attention. Poetry will always be an art respected by many. Paper and the pen is like the one entity that doesn't judge, you know, it doesn't, you know, ask you stupid questions, anything like that. This is Eva Dela Cruz reporting for Writer Right Now. Well, Ryder, thanks for tuning in and getting the latest of happenings on Ryder's campus. Tune in next week to get full coverage of the SGA elections. I'm Kelly Dixon. See you later, Ryder.